Hey everyone, as we move towards the end of this year and prepare for another great year, I'm reminded of a story we often use to illustrate a great strategy for personal success. And it's a story illustrated well by many, millions and millions and millions of kids around the world. And it's, and it's the story of how they embarked upon playing and mastering a video game. So as I go through this little story, ask yourself, um, look for the lessons, look, look for the lessons. Um, that you can apply in your own career and your own personal strategy. So um, at, at the beginning of the story, what, what, what happens first is a, a child is allowed something to capture their imagination, something that they like to do, something that inspires them or, or, or interests them, captures their imagination. And along with their imagination being captured, there are two words that often accomplish, accomplish um, somebody telling them or they're discovering a new video game. One is fun, right? They always hear that, that word is always used, but the other one is the one I want you to think about. It's difficult, hard, challenging. They almost always are present. These words are almost always present at the beginning stages of a, of a, of a, of a child wanting to, to play a new video game. And, and often, the harder they hear it is, the more they want to get their hands on it. But before they can play it, the second thing, before they can play it, they have to find a way to get it paid for. So in few cases, the, 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 the kids can pay for it themselves, but in the larger, more common case, they have to make their case and go find or borrow or convince somebody with the means, like parents, to actually go buy the game for them. So they have to find a way to get the capital required to get access to this game. So they, they do that and their host they, they figure that out individually, they overcome that obstacle, they make it happen. And then they get the game. And when they first log into the new game, they are not good at it. In fact, many times they, they kind of suck at it. And and they fail at it they, right in the beginning. You know, it may have 27 levels, but they get stuck in level two or three. And, and the only way they get better is to keep playing, keep doing it, to fail more, to fail more. One thing I want to point out about it, when they fail, they don't, they don't view it as failing. They view it as just a temporary stage that they're in, a temporary um, place that they're at, and they know they're going to get beyond it. But they don't take that failure as, as some type of personal characteristic. They don't blame the game maker. They don't think that the game is out to get them. They don't, they don't attribute anything other to them failing at that stage of the game other than they not accomplishing what they need to accomplish at that stage of the game. And they somehow know that they will get beyond that and it doesn't make them feel bad. They like the challenge. They just oh, they shrug it off and they move forward. Another aspect of the game is that um, this mastery, them getting better in the game is largely done after they do all the other things they have to do. Like go to school and do stuff around the house and all the different things that they have to do. So the game is played in their off time, in their free time. Often, they're so excited about the game, they stay up later. They work, they stay up later, they do it at night. They, they, they extend the time of their day so that they can just play this game. Now, for those that are really dedicated to getting good at the game fast, they reach out to somebody else that has mastered the game and they ask them for advice, for insight, for, for, for um, instruction on how to get from this level to the next level. In some cases, there might be books written on the game. They might go online or to the store, different places where they have these magazines or books or articles on how to get from such level to such level, how to master the game. So they do those things. But, but even when they do those things, they have to play it. They have to play it and fail and move beyond. Play it, fail, master that, skip, get to the next level. They stay in the game. They keep doing it. And after countless numbers of hours, they finally get to the point where they have mastered the game. They get to that final ultimate level. And when they do that, they're not given any money reward. In many cases, there's no even recognition other than from the game to them. But what they get out of mastering that game, out of doing all of those different things, is satisfaction of overcoming the challenges to master the game. And as good as they may feel, they know that that mastery is just temporary 
because sometime during that year, there will probably be another version of that very game released that is different and even more challenging than the one they just mastered. And then that fire is ignited, and that, that whole cycle starts again, and they go back to the beginning, and they go through the entire process again. And those are just what kids are willing to do to play the game. But you have to ask yourself, when, when you look at what adults are doing to provide for their families, when, what adults are doing to enhance their careers, you know, and you just go back through that same process starting at the very beginning, you know, do, does, the cha does the word challenge or hard or difficult draw them in or push them away? And you go through all the stages of, that's required to master the levels of a game. And if you trans them over, transfer them over into a personal adult strategy, you will see that there's deep, immense, and profound lessons that we can learn as we watch kids master a game. Something to think about as you prepare to have a fantastic new year.